Hey everyone, it's Michael from Xano. In this video, I'm going to cover our newest cloud storage functions, uh, Amazon S3. So as you guessed, uh, these functions allow you to interact with your Amazon S3 storage buckets directly in your Xano function stack. Now, technically you've always been able to do this, but you've had to build those external API calls to uh, Amazon S3 yourself. What we've done is we've created functions that really abstract it and make it super easy and streamlined for you to do things like upload images, retrieve those images, create signed URLs that expire for those files, um, and various things like that. So I'll go ahead and show you what you need to know to get set up in your AWS console, and then also how to use these new Amazon S3 cloud storage functions. So let's go ahead and jump over to Xano and take a look. Okay, so over to Xano, uh, we have a test function stack here. So let's go and add a new function and you can see if we go down to cloud storage here, we'll find Amazon S3. And here you'll see that we can do various items like list directory, create a sign URL, upload, delete files, and also create a variable from a file resource. So for example, if I click on this top one here, list directory, well, you'll notice there are some things we need to fill out. So we'll need our bucket name, our region for that bucket, our access key, and our secret access key. So we're gonna need these for every single one of our functions. So before we go any further, I wanna jump over to my AWS developer console and show you how you can go ahead and, do, and get these things. So over to my AWS console, uh, once you have your account all set up and ready to go, the first thing I want you to do is come up here to the top right and click on your name or your username and click security credentials. Once you've done that, scroll down till you see this access key section and hit create access key. The use case you want to select is command line interface, CLI. You'll want to go ahead and check this box for confirmation, hit next. You can give an optional description tag here. I'm just gonna leave mine blank. And then you'll hit create access key. Now you'll wanna store this information in a safe place. Of course, you have your access key right here and also your secret access key, which will be hidden. You can download this as a CSV file if you'd like, and they give you some best practices. So what I'm gonna do for this exercise is I'm gonna store these as environment variables in Xano. So I'm gonna go ahead and first take my access key I'm just gonna copy that and come over to Xano. And if I go to my settings and hit manage, create new variable, I'll do access key here. And I'll just call this S3 access key just to make sure. And I'll paste that value in. And then I'll also do that for my secret. And I'm just gonna go ahead and jump ahead so you don't need to see this step because I'm just copying and pasting. Okay, so I've saved both my S3 access key and my S3 uh, secret key as environment variables here in Xano. Now I'm gonna navigate back to that function stack that I've started to set up. And you can see here now my access key and my secret are available here in environment variables and you'll notice that they'll be obfuscated here, which is really nice. But now I need a bucket in a region and I'm actually gonna create these just as variables here in my function stack. And Reason I'm doing that is because maybe you'll be interacting with multiple buckets in regions um, and you might want to switch that up. But I'm just going to go ahead and create some empty variables here at first. So we have bucket and then let's go ahead and grab our region here and we'll need to fill these values in. Right. So how do I get these values? So let's go back to our AWS console. And so in our AWS console, if we just go ahead and search S3 here we should be able to find S3 buckets. And if you haven't yet created a bucket, you can go ahead and do so. I'm gonna use this Xano S3 test right here. So this will be my bucket name actually. So I'm just gonna go ahead and copy that. And let's jump back into Xano and paste in that bucket name right here. And then for region, you'll actually see that uh, it has the AWS region as this whole thing, US, West, Oregon, us dash west two, but we only need this last part here as region. So this us dot dash west dash two. So we're gonna use that for region. Go to my region variable 
and simply paste that in. Great, all right. So now let's go back into this uh, S3 list directory function, our very first one, which will give us the information of that bucket. So let's go ahead and map up my uh, bucket name to my bucket variable and my region there. We already have done our access key in secret. Now, next page token. So this function will have a page limit of 1,000 files. So if, you're, uh, if your bucket is under that, you won't have a next page token. But if you run this and there's, uh, let's say, 1,001, then the first time you run this, there'll be a next page uh, token. So what you can do is you can take that token uh, and insert it into this uh, variable box here in order to get the next page and so on and so forth. So we just use that if you have many, many files and you're trying to see the next page, next page. So let's go ahead and save this so I can show you what this looks like when I run this. And here you go. Now we get the items or the contents of that bucket. You can see there's information like uh, this key, things like last modified, size, etc., etc. And you can see my next page token is empty here because I only have some 10 items in here. So let's go ahead and do the next function. So I'm just gonna go ahead and hide my list directory and let's go to cloud storage, Amazon S3, and let's do assigned URL. And so here I'm just going to start to fill in the same information. We'll get our region. We'll go ahead and put our access key here and our secret here. And so file key, so actually file key, you'll notice that was returned in uh, the list directory. Now, real quick, you can also get that uh, from inside your AWS console. So for example, inside my Xano S3 test bucket here, you can see if I click on this pyramids file, you can see the key name is right here, pyramids.jpg. So if I were to come in here and just paste in that file key, and our TTL is just time to live. So how long is this signed URL good for before it expires? So if you're sharing this, that this file is only good for a certain amount of time, however long you define that in seconds. So if I go ahead and run this, for example, you can see we get our URL and when that actually expires as a timestamp. So I can actually copy this and go to this. And you can see it'll actually open up this file of the pyramids for me. Uh, which is pretty cool. So that link will expire after uh, 300 seconds. Now, of course, we can also get this value programmatically. Remember when we went ahead and ran our list directory here, we can go ahead and run this again. And you can see the key is all in here. So if we wanted to go ahead and actually grab this pyramids.jpg, well, what I can do is I can actually, let's come back into here. So I just, I'm just going to copy these results. And the reason I'm going to do that is I'm going to just use our subpath option to get the exact dot notation in that array of what I'm looking for. So we'll go ahead and do subpath here. I'm going to define this, go into items, and I just want my pyramid.jpg. So there you go. It's the seventh item. That's why that six in there is for the index. And you can see I can get that programmatically. So if I run this again, you can see there is my signed URL. So pretty cool. Um, great, so let's go into the next one, which is gonna be upload a file. And once again, we have all the same information we need to fill in. That's why I put all this stuff in variables so I don't have to keep re-entering it. Of course, if you're you know working with the same bucket and region all the time, then you could very well put those in environment variables so that you don't have to create variables here. I just did that for the sake of this exercise. Um, but coming down here, you can see there is file key in file. So we actually need a, a file resource here to actually upload. So let's go ahead and do that as an input. So I'm gonna add an input here. I'm going to do storage and I'll do file resource. And we'll just call this file for now. And let's come back down into my upload file. And I'm actually gonna hide the list directory and signed URL for now. So upload file. So let's go ahead and map up my file resource input here. We'll just go ahead and call this image upload as the variable. Uh, the file key is optional. That's if you want to uh, create a specific name for the file key. Otherwise, one will be assigned. Let's go ahead and save that. And let's just change our response here to image upload. And now I'm going to go ahead and run this and pick a file. 
Okay, so I'm going to upload this uh, image of a file, and I'm just going to go ahead and hit run. And now you can see I get the result back. I get some metadata. And let's go over to our S3 bucket and check it out. So over into our S3 bucket, you can see here is my pizza image, right? And so you can see the key name uh, just took on the same name as the file because I didn't specify one. Of course, I could have actually went ahead and uh, did that. And now let's head back to Xano. And let's go into the next Amazon S3 function, which is delete a file. So here, same thing. Let's map up our bucket, region. We have our access key and also our secret. And now we just need a file key to delete a file. So let's just simply delete that pizza file that we had just uploaded. So I'm going to go ahead and hit save here. Let's hide this image upload. I don't need this file resource anymore. Um, and I don't need anything in the response because we're just deleting a file. So if I just run this, success, let's go to our S3 bucket. And now you can see pizza is gone from my S3 bucket. Awesome. So we have one final function to work with. And that's going to be uh, create variable from file resource. So here, let's go ahead and map everything up. Access key secret. And maybe I'll grab that pyramids.jpg. And we return this as var1. So what exactly is this function going to do here? So this function will essentially uh, take one of those files from your S3 bucket, and it will create it as a file resource here in Xano. And why is that important? Because now you can do things like if you need to send that file, that raw image to another service, if you need to do some, some things here in the function stack with it, uh, maybe upload it to Xano, maybe make it downloadable by API, you can go ahead and do all that. So let me just go ahead and run this real quick. And here you can see my return object. So I have some metadata, I have the name of the file, the size of the file in the MIME type, and the data is the actual raw image. So you're probably not really returning this very often because it's gonna be so large um, and could slow down like a front end or something, but you're probably just taking uh, this object, taking data within it, which is that raw image, and maybe sending it to another service, uh, maybe uh, uploading this into your Xano file storage. Uh, there's a whole lot of use cases for it. Um, check out our documentation on some examples, but just wanted to show you what this actually returns. So it's taking my pyramids image from my S3 bucket and giving me the actual uh, raw file here underneath that data path. So there you have it. We went through list directory, creating a signed URL, uploading and deleting a file, uh, and then also creating a uh, variable from file resource. Uh, we also covered how to get that access key, that secret access key what your bucket name is and what your region is. So pretty straightforward. We make it a lot easier to interact with those Amazon S3 buckets. Of course, you know, if you have more media intensive applications and you want full control over your file storage uh, and bandwidth and things like that, then one of the Google Cloud Storage solution, or sorry, one of the Cloud storage solutions, either Google Cloud Storage or Amazon S3, are really good options, and you can interact with all those things directly in your Xano function stack. So thanks for watching, guys, and hope you uh, are finding this Amazon S3 uh, functions useful.